<laughs> All right. Good morning. You could hear that, huh? Okay. Thank you for coming to community or to North Anvil Bible Church to worship with us. Uh, we appreciate your presence. We look forward to worshiping our Lord Jesus Christ in spirit and in truth. Uh, if you're here for the first time, on your bulletin there's a tear-off sheet. Please fill that out and put it in the uh, offering box in the back of the room at the end of the service so we can recognize you and get to know you a little bit better. Um, Otherwise, we have a couple announcements which were on the screen, which many of you probably saw, but also <clears throat> in your bulletin. But I'll highlight a few of them before we begin the service. Um, first of all, today is Move Up Sunday. These are the most pertinent ones because they take place today. Move Up Sunday, all children move up, move up to the Sunday school class that coincides with the grade they will be entering in the fall. For instance, if you are in sixth grade and just got finished with sixth grade, you'll be moving into seventh grade. We're having you do that today at the beginning of summer rather than waiting to the fall. So every child that is to move up, that's supposed to take place today, whatever grade you're in, if you're moving forward to the next class. Secondly, an important announcement is today is youth group picnic at one o'clock. And that's going to take place out at Denny and Bonnie Rhodes Place on Bates 70, 15 Bates Drive in Anvil. If you have any questions or haven't signed up for that, you are still welcome. You need to contact either Pastor Dustin or Jenny Rhodes or, or Denny. They're sitting in the back here. Stand up, please, so if there's anybody who didn't, you just have to stand so they know who they're looking at. There you go. So if you are here, haven't signed up for that, you're still welcome, you and your family. And then they ask that you bring a dessert or a side dish or both to help offset the food. Uh, a couple other announcements I'll touch on is the Ladies Fellowship Breakfast, which was on the screen at Heisey's Diner on June 18th. There'll be a youth group all-nighter on Friday, June 24th. Uh, if you have any questions, see Pastor Dustin about that. And then also summer camp, which is coming up. There's, it's listed in your bulletin. It's $150 per camper per week. And they have the ages listed there when it's pertinent to each age group. Uh, other than that, you can see in the bulletin the rest of the announcements that are coming up in the month of June. So you want to pay close attention to that so you're familiar with it and if it is something that you would be interested in doing. Uh, before Brian comes and we go before the Lord in worship and song, I want to read a couple scriptures from Psalm 22 that are really relevant to us as worshipers of the Lord Jesus Christ. The first one says in verse 3 of chapter 22, but you are holy who inhabit the praises of your people. We're here for a purpose, to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. He's our audience. He's the one we came to lift up our voices to. And then David goes on in verse 22 of the same chapter, I will declare your name to my brethren. We have that responsibility to worship the Lord surrounded by the brethren. I, th I really like that verse and what it says. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. When Brian leads us in song and music, our purpose is to worship. Worship the Lord Jesus Christ in spirit and in truth. And verse 25, these are all in chapter 22 of Psalms. My praise shall be of you in the great congregation. Ah, when we come in here gathered together, we have that privilege of worshiping the Lord amongst one another who have a like faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I will pay my vows before those who fear him. Think about that. We don't just come because we come, but we come to worship the one only true God. 
of the universe. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are our God. As you tell us in the scriptures, you are in our midst. You voices to you. We worship you, Lord, because you are worthy, being the only God of this universe. And we, as believer people who have put their trust in Jesus Christ, have that privilege of lifting up your name because you are holy and you are worthy. Thank you, Lord, for each one that's here today. Help us, Lord, to praise your holy name. We pray that you would be pleased, Lord, with the time that we share worshiping you. Thank you, Lord, for each one that's here today. Thank you for the opportunity to be in your midst. Oh, Lord, forgive us when we take that for granted. Forgive us when we don't worship you as you are worthy of being worshiped. So guide and direct us now, O oh Lord, as we come before you in prayer, as we come before you in worship. And Lord, be with Pastor Dustin as he brings forth the word this morning. Fill him with the Holy Spirit even now, Lord, and use him in a mighty way to bring honor and glory to yourself. Help us, Lord, to do the same as we worship you in spirit and truth. And we'll thank you and praise you for it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Right? Amen. Thank you, Randy. Let's stand together as we as we begin.
give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah for the cross. Amen. Maybe be seated. <laughs> yes, sorry about that. Uh, good morning. Good morning. I have the uh, privilege to introduce our, our special guests that we have here this morning. Um, Kate and Zach Bechtel are a young couple that I've got to know very well over the last, I don't know, how long, Kate? It's been a long time. Kate is the daughter to Britt and Jody Harmon, who are missionaries for our church. Britt and Jody Harmon live in Guatemala. They're the family that we've gone to visit numerous times. Kate is their oldest daughter. And uh, she met her husband, Zach, in a ministry called YWAM, Youth with, Youth with a Mission. And um, they fell in love, got married. Zach actually moved to Guatemala for a little while while they were dating. And um, now they feel that God has called them into full-time ministry. So they are going to be working with the same organization that they met in, YWAM. So this morning, I'm going to let them come forward and let them tell their story and uh, let them tell you where they're headed and what their plan is. So Zach and Kate. All right. Good morning. Uh, just really thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to come and, and share with you guys and be here with you as well. I think it's such a special Sunday to be here as well as I see all the communion cups out. It's just such a nice reminder that like we go to a different church, we may be going to a different country, but we're all one body, right? And we all have one Lord. So we're very thankful to be here with you guys and a special Sunday and share this time with you guys. Uh, so my name is Zach Bechtel. Uh, so I'm from 27. I'm a retired engineer, so I'm from New Jersey. Uh, <laughs> I worked as an engineer for three years, and then I started to realize that um, the God of the Bible, the God I was following, uh, the things I was reading, it didn't really line up with the ways that I was living. So I decided to really just commit my life to following him um, fully. So I quit my job and had been pursuing uh, missions and just pursuing serving him in that way. And I'm Kate, as some of you know. Um, I'm originally from Indiana, and then um, my parents, we all moved to Guatemala to be missionaries when I was about 12. And then when I was about 17, moved back to Indiana, worked for a little while, and then I went to YWAM, which is where Zach and I met. So. Yeah, so uh, like Eric said, YWAM stands for Youth with a Mission. So what we went to, uh, where Kate and I met, it was called a Discipleship Training School. So this is important because that's a big part of the ministry that we're going to be starting in the Canary Islands in Spain. Uh, we have like a little map in the back of where that is. So the Canary Islands are right off the coast of Morocco. So they belong to Spain, kind of almost like our, our Puerto Rico or the uh, uh, St. John. But so YWAM, uh, we have a, the slogan is to know God and make him known. So the goal is to raise up young people to know God, uh, just to be disciples wherever they end up in life. So whether they want to be missionaries, that would be awesome and great. We'll send them out in that way. But if they want to go back and be construction workers, teachers, the goal is just to be, help them to be disciples wherever they, they go in life. So a discipleship training school, what we went to, it's two parts, a lecture phase and an outreach phase. So the first three months, um, we would go have classes. Each week would be a different topic and a different teacher. And then afterwards, we would lead an outreach. Um, so ours was in England and Spain, where we got to put all of those lessons, all that discipleship into practice and to see how that looks in real life. So the way we got, um, I'm a little off my nails, but it's OK. The way we got uh, involved with YWAM was through our discipleship training school. But then actually, while we were serving in Guatemala, we always had a heart for the country of Spain. So before we went to Spain, we just said, uh, before we went to Guatemala, we decided that we would be in Guatemala serving there for as long as the Lord had us. So we went and just served in other ministries, just tried to learn from those who are much more experienced and who have been gone before us uh, to learn Spanish better um, and just to serve there and, and pray for Spain until the Lord called us on. So while we were there, we um, were approached by base leaders from Spain in YWAM who had this opportunity to go and help pioneer a new base, a new project in the Canary Islands. So while we were there, we took a month to pray and to fast, and we really felt that was the way that the Lord was opening this door for us to go to Spain and, and serve him there. So our goal, so the Canary Islands, um, 
being off the coast of Morocco, it's a really strange mix. So it's got, it's an island, so it has a lot of tourism, but then also you have a lot of refugees. So for a lot of people in North Africa, specifically Morocco and the Western Sahara, some of it, it's like their doorway to Europe. So they come with the hopes of then being sent over to the mainland. So you have a lot of, uh, a big gap in, in the community of some of like the very rich people on tourism, and then you have some people who are just seeking these opportunities and didn't really know where else to turn. So we have such a heart um, for the refugees, for young adults, and our local churches. So as we were praying for Spain all that time in Guatemala and serving, we were always praying into these opportunities because we had the opportunity in England to serve uh, some refugees. We have always had a heart for young adults. We've served in youth ministry before, um, as well as we just understand the strength and the need of local churches because um, it's great like to have our, our private faith, but we really need the body of Christ to come together to be that change in the world for Christ. So while we're in uh, the Canary Islands, we're gonna have these dual, two focuses. So one would be starting that school, the discipleship training school. So young adults from all around the world, maybe even Anvil, Pennsylvania, right, can come to the Canary Islands with the goal of being discipled. So they would go through this discipleship training program. They would go and receive classes and instruction in the faith, and they can grow in their walk with Christ. And then afterwards, we would help lead an outreach with those same kids and help them put into practice all those things they're learning. And then we would also be hosting those outreaches. So um, like churches, as well as uh, other bases, other YWAM bases, students who just finished their lecture phase would come to the Canary Islands and partner with us in the ministries that we are uh, working in in the Canary Islands. So then reaching our community, that would be our goal. Is, so we would be having the school, we'd be teaching it and starting it, as well as we would be serving in our community. So when outreach teams come, as well as our own teams, like the students that are serving with us, they could just come alongside the things that we're already doing. So we, like we said, we have a heart for the refugees there. Uh, we have a heart for the young adults and for the local churches, just helping them come together. Because I know churches in, in Spain and just around the world can be a little territorial. So hoping maybe to bring, break down some of those gaps through the, young, through the bringing up a generation for Christ. I jumped around. I got to check to make sure I, I'm getting everything. Yeah. So then that's kind of what we're doing, a little bit about what we did. So what we're doing right now is we're preparing for that time. So we need uh, visas. So right now we're in the visa process. We are currently waiting. So YWAM, our organization, has gone to the Spanish government on our, on our behalf. So we're just waiting for a letter from the Spanish government before we can start the visa process. So our goal would be to receive that letter, our visas, in August, and we will be going in September. So September 10th is our, our goal, Lord willing. And yeah, we don't have flights yet, but that's yeah, our Yeah, we haven't booked the flights yet, <laughs> but September. So while we're doing that, we're waiting for the visa process. We're going through uh, like fingerprinting, medical checks, as well as uh, raising funds. So we're going around uh, to various churches and meeting with different people. And then we're also working. So I work as a substitute teacher in our local school district because part of our goal here is trying to show our friends and family and the people around us that you don't need to go to Spain. You don't need to be a full-time person to be a witness uh, just in your life and for the people around you. So that kind of goes along with our prayer requests are in those three areas, uh, our visas uh, for fundraising as well as just being a witness to those around us and just taking advantage of the time we have with friends and family and our time here in the United States. Uh, so we also, in the back end, there's a little table. We have some prayer cards. If you want, you can join us in that way, and we'll be back there after the service. If you have any questions or anything that I might have skipped. Um, but yeah, we also have a little picture, too, of where the Canary Islands are, so you can kind of have a, an idea of where we'll be and how you could be praying for us as well. Uh, we just, once again, thank you guys so much for this opportunity, and it's definitely a blessing to be here. Could uh, Kate update us on the Harmon family yes. and where she is in the line of all those kids and what some of those kids are doing? Maybe what your parents are doing right now. Okay, yeah. Um, so I am the fourth of eight children. Um, I'm the oldest daughter. Um, and I have two brothers that are in Wyoming right now. One is married and has a kid, and then um, the other one is engaged. And then um, I have another brother who's in Alabama, and then a sister who's in Indiana, and then the younger ones are all still in Guatemala. Um, 
uh, my parents right now, they are, oh, what would you say they're doing? They're doing, they have like the leather ministry where they make leather bags and they hire um, men that have had a rough past to like help them have jobs. And my dad teaches them how to um, make the leather bags and then he sells them like in the States and stuff. And so it gives those men an opportunity to like build their life up again. Um, and he's running the Bible study through Freddie's house. Yeah, and then he has a Bible study that he's doing through one of the men's house. So he gets to help in the Bible studies and invite people to the Bible study. Yeah. And then Brother Mallory, you started. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then there's also a ministry that they're um, kind of getting involved with now. It's called Prayer Mountain. Um, so a uh, Guatemalan man has had the opportunity to purchase um, a plot of land where they're hoping to have like retreats as well as a training center for one of the villages uh, in Guatemala. So uh, Brett would be helping take up that discipleship part and training the local community there on like how to read the Bible and how to get involved with their faith. Yeah. And then uh, the young kids are in Spanish and doing some young adults Bible studies and things. And, yeah. yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much. All right. Thank you so much. And be praying for these young people. Maybe we need to take a trip down there, those Canary Islands. Yeah, sounds good. Right, hon? <laughs> All right, let's stand together as we continue with one song before Pastor Dustin comes. little thing right here every now and then I make a mistake with where I put it that's not good because then Karen's in a different key ha, ha. all right let's try that again amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but i 
another and then have a seat. Good morning. <laughs> if, you're new, if you are new here, uh, I am Pastor Dustin. I am the assistant pastor here. Our lead pastor, Todd, is on sabbatical for the summer, so we hope that's a good time for them to get away. And so if, again, just to remind our, our regular people that if you bump into them that, this summer, that's okay. Um, <laughs> Some of their kids are in school with your kids. Some of their kids play sports with your kids. All right. This is not a avoid at all costs. You know, if you see them in the grocery store, don't just like walk the other way. All right. You, you can talk to the shoemakers. All right. We just ask that you just don't bring up the carpet in the church or what's going on. You know, try to leave the church stuff out of it. Give them time to rest and relax. I know they'll be traveling a little bit. But again, just a reminder for our church people. Um, at this time, uh, we'll have the kids dismissed, those five years old up to going into third grade. So this is our move up Sunday. So if you were in third grade last week, you are no longer in third grade this week. Um, so for my son Shane uh, and maybe many other, any others, uh, you guys get to join us here this morning. So um, take your Bibles and turn to Proverbs chapter 22. Oh, he tried to sneak out. I <laughs> Take your Bibles and turn to Proverbs chapter 22. While you're turning there, one other quick announcement um, for youth camp this summer. Um, please, uh, let's try to, we want to try to get those, everybody signed up by next week. So um, please check the ca your calendars if your kids can go to camp this summer and, and sign them up for that so we can give them a number of how many are coming. And one other thing, I don't think it was in the bulletin, the church directories are finished. Um, they are out there in the foyer, so church family, you may take one per family, please. And we are past the editing stage, so what you see is what you got, all right? No, no changing your address or your mugshot or anything like that. So, um, uh, Proverbs chapter 22. So Pastor Todd, before he left, started a series in Proverbs, um, and I and Dale Mort are going to continue on in that. And so that's why we are in Proverbs again today, uh, Proverbs chapter 22. But before we get into this, let's go to the Lord this morning for prayer. Heavenly Father God, we thank you that you are God, that you have given us your word so that we may know who you are, what you've done for us, and what it is you require of us. So Father, as we come to you today, we ask that we come with hearts open, with our lives open to your word, Lord, that you may change what needs to be changed, changed, that you may work in our lives to make us more like you, that you may move in us to reach our communities with the gospel. So Lord, right now, I just ask that you help us to set aside the craziness, the distractions of life, Lord, and come to you with open hearts and minds. We pray this in your name. Amen. 
So Proverbs chapter 22, um, our key verse is going to be verse 4, and I'm going to be reading from the ESV, um, I, but if you're reading from the NASB or the King James, I think they're all really similar in their translations. Um, but from the ESV, it says this in Proverbs 22, verse 4, it says, the, revo- the reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. And so our topic, as we've kind of been doing some topics recently in Proverbs today, is the topic of humility. Now, last summer, when we went uh, church camping, um, we took the teens on a hike one day, all right? And so on this hike, we told the teens, hey, we'll go hiking for a couple hours. Um, we'll, we'll have a good hike, get some exercise, uh, have a good time together, bonding time as teens, you know, that sort of thing. So we hiked up the mountain, and if you know, back at Camp Swatera, there's that hike up the mountain that you go over all the boulders, and then you get up to the top of the mountain, and then you have the Appalachian Trail up there. And so we got up to the top, we started coming across part of the Appalachian Trail, and then we came down a different trail to come back to camp. And it was on this other trail down the mountain that uh, we ran into a problem. You see, this, this trail kind of zigzagged back and forth, down the mountain. And somewhere along the way, we realized that the trail must have zigged or zagged, and we did not. Because we were now walking through the woods. We couldn't find any of the markers from the trail anymore. So we were kind of in uncharted territory. And we did eventually start making it. We just decided, okay, let's just make our way down. We know we need to come down the mountain, so let's at least do that. So we did that. We came down the mountain, found the camp, um, after another couple hours. Uh, it, took a little, it took a little longer than our estimated trip. But we forgot to pay attention and somehow got lost along the way in the tra- on the trail. And as we've been in the book of Proverbs, we have talked about a lot about learning wisdom and making wise and godly choices in the journey of our Christian life. And along with that is the importance of humility And that's our topic today, humility in Proverbs. So let me begin by saying the journey to wisdom is traveled on the path of humility. Humility is an underlying topic throughout the entire book of Proverbs, and in fact, the entire Bible. And so as I read our passage today, the reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. And we begin, it begins with this, there's a reward, all right? And usually that perks people up, right? So if, if our kids if say, we will give you, all of a sudden your kids start listening to you. Okay, what do I have to do to get what I'm going to be given? All right, and so right here at the beginning of the verse, there's this, there's this mention of a reward. <clears throat> but the reward is actually the end result. It's usually if you do this, then you get this. All right, so it's after your team has beat all the other teams in the playoffs, then you're crowned the champion, right? You get that reward. If after you've finished your years and years of work for a certain company, then they give you retirement. All right, it's, it's graduation season. So this weekend on, on Friday night, I went to my nephew's graduation. Um, yesterday morning, we went to New Covenant's graduation. Uh, and, and saw the kids graduate there. And then last night we were at my cousin's son's graduation party. He graduated from Anvil. All right, so it's that season. All right, it's graduation season. And in all those, whether it was my, my nephew's graduation or the one at New Covenant, they had a long, cer- well, a long ceremony. All right, some people, we like our ceremonies shorter. Some of them were a little bit long, but this, the, they went through all these recognitions and awards, and you saw the pictures of when they were kids and babies and all these things. And then at the very end, they handed them that diploma. That was the end reward of all their work. Could you imagine what would happen if the first day of senior year, the students walked in and they're just like, here's your diploma, all right? How many of them would not show up the rest of the year, you know, for school? All right, the reward comes at the end. The reward is the consequence or the wages of what has been done. Just as in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. The price of sin is death. Um, The reward for humility is riches and honor and life. 
And speaking of the reward or the wages of sin, let me take a moment and say that if you do not know Jesus Christ as Savior, this would be a great day to do that because there is a reward for our sin. All have sinned. All of us have sinned. And the reward for that, the Bible says, is death. The reward for that is separation from God. And so if you don't know Jesus Christ as Savior today, let me encourage you to make him your Lord and Savior. God is welcoming and open with open arms all who want to confess their sin, all who are willing to confess their sin and accept that penalty that Jesus took on himself and died when he died on the cross. Because the wages, the true reward, the consequences of our sin is death. But it is important for us to remember that the reward comes last. Oftentimes in our day and age, like I said, you know, we want that reward. We want that quickly. We want that now. But let me, sh- let me share a couple of verses in Proverbs here. Proverbs 15, 13 says, The fear of the Lord is instruction and wisdom, and humility comes before honor. Humility comes before honor. And then Proverbs 18, 12 says this, Before destruction... A man's heart is haughty, but humility comes before honor. At the very beginning of the verse, we see that there is a reward coming, but it comes at the end. Now, if our, excuse me, if our topic is humility, first of all, we've got to talk about what is humility. You know, if somebody were to ask you what is humility, what would we say? I mean, we could look it up online because we like to do that. Everybody uh, easily has access to online. And so an online definition of humble, humility is this. It's marked by meekness or modesty in behavior, attitude or spirit, not arrogant, not prideful. The biblical term means to have a lowly mind or to be modest. It is the renunciation of human sufficiency. Humility is the ability to say, is the is me saying, I am insufficient in what I am. The humble person fears the Lord because their humility leads them to admit that they are not in control, they are not in charge, and there is someone greater than they who who is in charge, is in command. And last Sunday, Pastor Todd taught on the sovereignty of God, and that is the one that we trust Um, That is the one that we rely on, and that is why we can be so humble, because we have a God who is in control. Therefore, the one who walks in wisdom, which is a major theme, again, in Proverbs, is the one who is humble and fears the Lord. So if you are a Christian desiring to grow in wisdom, as we learn from the book of Proverbs, one of the evidences that you are learning wisdom is that if you are growing in humility. So here we are. I think we're six, eight weeks into the sermon series, into the book of Proverbs. And Pastor Todd has covered chapters one through nine, kind of systematically walking through them. And we keep talking about wisdom. We keep talking about the fear of the Lord. But if we're going to grow in wisdom, how do we know if we're growing in wisdom? Well, part of that is there should be a growth in humility as well. In Proverbs, we're warned about being the fool or we're warned of the fool. And oftentimes when we hear the word fool, we think of somebody that's just dumb, and they're just ignorant, you know, Um, like some cartoon characters they portray as being dumb or ignorant. But that's not what the fool is in the book of Proverbs. The fool that Proverbs speaks of is one who denies the righteousness and authority of God. He denies his own moral makeup that God created him with. And so naturally, the opposite of humility or the opposite path, or getting off the path of humility, is that of pride. Now, my family went hiking um, one time at at Toby Hanna State Park, Um, and as you get there and you get on the main trail, we found this sign, and I know you can't read it, so I will read it for you. Um, The important part says, warning, this area is a former military artillery range and may contain unexploded shells. 
use caution when walking off the trails. Now, now Toby Hanna State Park knows how to make hiking interesting. Um, <laughs> and that, I mean, but, but that works, because when you tell your kids, hey, stay on the trail or you might explode, okay? <laughs> they, they listen to that. They'll, they'll follow that one. But pride is where we end up if we reject the way of wisdom and humility. Pride is getting off the trail and you get into the minefield of pride. You, uh, when you get off the trail of humility, you get into the minefield of pride. And there are still, in Europe, there are still um, forests and fields where, there's, where they have signs that say, hey, this was a minefield during World War II. Um, not, we're not sure if all of them have been found, so walk with caution. Okay, and that's what happens when we get off the path of humility. We get into the minefield of pride. And Proverbs 16, 18, we probably all know and can say by heart, it says this, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Um, in the book of Second Chronicles, if you want to turn there, um, I'll have a lot of the verses up here on the screen. But if you want to turn there, Second Chronicles 26 comes right after First Chronicles, if you're wondering. Um, you know, sometimes it's hard to find Second Chronicles. Second uh, Chronicles 26, we find the story of King Uzziah. Now after, remember we're talking the book of Proverbs, a lot of the Proverbs were, were written by Solomon. Um, so we have, if we go into our history of Israel, you have King David, everybody knows. He had, he was the king of Israel. And then his son Solomon took over and kind of expanded the kingdom. But after Solomon died, the kingdom ended up splitting up. And then you had the northern tribes of Israel um, create their own kingdom called Israel. And the, the southern tribes became the, the kingdom of Judah. All right. And so Uzziah, King Uzziah, was king of Judah. And he became king of Judah when he was just 16 years old. At age 16, he was responsible for being king of an entire nation. All right, and 2 Chronicles 26, 4 and 5 say this, And he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. According to, uh, to all that his father Ahaziah had done, he set himself to seek God in the days of Zechariah, who instructed him in the fear of God. And as long as he sought the Lord... God made him to prosper. And in 2 Chronicles 26, verses 6 through 15, we kind of see how God made him to prosper, the many ways in which he prospered. King Uzziah, his accomplishments um, as a young king were extraordinary. He was victorious in war against the Philistines and other enemies. He built cities and fortifications to protect from invasion. The nation of Judah prospered in the area of agriculture and economics. He built an impressive military to protect the land and defeat their enemies, and he equipped them with quality weapons and shields. And so here we see King Uzziah following God and seeking after God and, and as a king, and God blessing him and prospering, prospering, prospering him as a king. And... <coughs> And his nation was doing well. To the point at verse 15, it says, in Jerusalem, oh, in Jerusalem he made machines invented by skillful men to be on the towers and the corners to shoot arrows and great stones. And his fame spread far, for he was marvelously helped till he was strong. And so we see here that King Uzziah, starting at 16 years of age, this great burden on him, Follow God. He was instructed by Zechariah, and he followed God. You know, many of us think that pride is something that happens to people that, you know, haven't been, you know, haven't been faithful to God that much. You know, maybe new Christians, maybe somebody who's never known God, that they're the ones that really struggle with pride. But here we see King Uzziah at 16 years old after serving God, and he comes to this point where it says he was marvelously helped till he was strong. Verse 16 says this, but when he was strong, he grew proud to his destruction, for he was unfaithful to the Lord his God. 
It's almost the exact wording from Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride is destructive. It destroys. It leads to anger, selfishness, self-righteousness, arrogance, and many other sins. And worst of all, it leads us to be unfaithful to God and puts us in direct opposition to Him, His will, and His work. Every one of us is in danger of becoming like Uzziah, and I would encourage you to re read later the story of King Uzziah, what happened to him. Why, why did he, in what way was he unfaithful to the Lord? Well, he, he thought he was all that, and so that he could just go bypass the priests, and I will offer sacrifices for myself, something God commanded them not to do. They were supposed to go through the priests. And I'll, I encourage you to read Second Chronicles uh, 26, the rest of that later. But, but the truth is that pride is destructive, and it led to his own destruction. This is why we need to wrap ourselves in humility toward God and others. Peter writes this. He says, Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humility is an underlying theme throughout the book of Proverbs and throughout the Bible, and it is essential for the Christian walk and for following the way of wisdom. Humility recognizes and trusts God's character, while pride rejects God's authority and good plan. Humility allows one to be overwhelmed with God's undeserved grace and goodness, while pride sees no need for grace and trust in its own goodness. Humility teaches us gentleness and patience, while pride is quickly angered and seeks control. Humility receives criticism and correction, while pride is devastated or angered by it. Humility leads to listening and understanding, while pride leads to too much talking and mostly about ourselves. Have you ever noticed that about somebody who's proud? They like to talk about themselves. Humility leads to teachability, while the proud is unteachable. And we could go on and on. Humility leads to prayer, because you're dependent on God. Pride leads to lack of prayer, because we are dependent on ourselves. <clears throat> Humility and the fear of the Lord, the reward for these are riches and honor and life. And in our study in Proverbs, we have already t talked about the fear of the Lord. It is the beginning of wisdom from chapter 9, verse 10. It's the very starting point of learning godly wisdom. The fear of the Lord is an awe for the sovereign, loving, and righteous God that makes us want to submit to His will. All right, fear of the Lord is not, oh no, I'm, I'm afraid of God. What's He going to do to me? Um, I don't want to be punished. I need to keep I need to keep uh, confessing my sins because I'm afraid of the punishment and everything. No, fear of the Lord is submitting ourselves, seeing that sovereign God, that loving God, that righteous God, and make us, makes us, encourages us to submit to His will. In order to learn and to live biblical wisdom, we must believe and trust the God who created us and sustains us and humble ourselves before Him. The fear of the Lord and humility go hand in hand. If we don't fear the Lord, then there is no use for humility, and if we don't have humility, we can't properly feel, fear the Lord. They go hand in hand together. Again, so as we're walking through the book of Proverbs and we're, we're talking about different, different topics, diff different discussions, uh, next week we'll be talking about the tongue and the words that we say, all these things as we seek to learn wisdom Fearing the Lord and humility go together. They're like two rails to the same train track. If you take a rail off, the train's not going to run on the tracks. Proverbs 28, oop, oh, maybe I missed, I'm going the wrong way. There we go. Uh, Proverbs 28, 14 says, Blessed is the one who fears the Lord always, but whoever hardens his heart will fall into calamity. The reward for humility, again, is riches and honor and life. Hebrews 11.6 says this. Oh, I didn't put that one on there either. 
Um, Hebrews eleven six says, And without faith it is impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. God is a rewarder of those who seek him. The path of humility is a difficult path. It's not an easy path. Our world is trending in the opposite direction. It doesn't take um, a, a social scientist or, or an economist, uh, economic person or a, a newscaster to see that our world tends toward pride, tends toward taking pride in who we are, in being ourselves. The path of humility is a difficult one, but the path of humility is to follow in the steps of Jesus. We have a great example, a greater example, another king other than Uzziah who we can follow in humility. I remember a few years ago, I think it was 2016, um, and where we were previously living, we had that big, well, you guys got it too, but that big snowstorm. All right, I think we, we got 36 to 38 inches where we lived in that, that one snowstorm. Um, I think it was a record for the Lehigh Valley area. Um, and after that snowstorm, when we went outside to play in the snow, um, Riley wasn't born yet, but Shane was pretty small. All right, and he basically had to wait and follow us, me and his older sisters, to kind of blaze a trail, right? And have you ever done that? You, you kind of step first, and then the kids can step into it. You follow in somebody else's footsteps. Well, let me tell you, the path of humility is not an easy path. It's difficult, but Jesus is the one that we follow. We follow his footsteps. And so Philippians 2, if you want to turn to Philippians chapter 2, <laughs> verses 3 through 11, explain Jesus' example of humility. Philippians chapter 2, beginning with verse 3, Paul writes this. He says, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only in his own interests, but also in the interests of others. Having this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, having the same mindset of Jesus, the same humble mindset, Uh, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. You can almost see the footprints in the snow here. So even though he was in the form of God, he thought it was not something to be grasped. He humbled himself. He took a step and came out as a servant uh, in the likeness of man. And he humbled himself more by becoming obedient to God, even to the point of death, even a death on the cross, the worst possible death a person at that time could experience. It was a criminal's death. And so can you see the footprints of humility that Jesus left as he went before us? And it's in Philippians 2, verse 9, it says, Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So Jesus humbled himself to come to earth, to die on the cross in our place, and God richly rewarded him for that that all will bow to him. Most people on earth are looking to move up in the world. But Jesus continuously lowered himself to the lowest position. God and creator of the universe entered into humanity and lived the life of the humble servant and died in our place for our sins that we might be forgiven. Jesus walked the path of humility. He made those steps in the snow for us to follow. And, our, and we are called to display the same humility as Jesus did, and God has promised to reward us, but you have to walk that difficult path of humility. You know, I, um, a lot of, my, my grandfather was an evangelist and a preacher, and in those days, 
it seemed a lot that they, they like to use poems a lot. I don't know. We don't use that as much anymore. I'm not a poem person, uh, but I did pick a poem for today because it just seemed to fit so, so much, and it's like the only poem I know. All right, so Robert Frost, which you probably all know, wrote the well-known poem, The Road Not Taken, right? This is that poem. It says, two roads diverge in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both. And be one traveler, long I stood, and I looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair, and having perhaps a better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for the passing there had worn them really about the same, and both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trod black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubt if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverge in a wood, and I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. In our journey toward wisdom, through the book of Proverbs, there are different paths to take. And Proverbs tells us the path to humility is the one that leads to reward. The reward for humility and the fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. If we want to learn true godly wisdom like the book of Proverbs calls us to, then we must walk the path of humility. Near the end of, of the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, who was alive during the time of King Uzziah, in his closing chapter, chapter 66 of Isaiah, God says this, he says, all these things my hands have made. I think I have it up here. There, that's the first I had up there. All these things my hands have has made, and so all these things came to be, declares the Lord. But this is the one to whom I will look. Who is God going to look upon? Isn't that what we want to know? Well, what is God looking for in us? Who is he going to look favorably upon? He who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. It's not somebody who can build something great. It's not Solomon because he built a huge temple. It's not David because he built a big kingdom. It's not this person because they, they have this great quality about them. They have this great skill about them. The one that God looks on, the one that God uses, is the one who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at God's word. So let me encourage you here today as we close. Humility is the path to wisdom, and it's, in, it's essential to our Christian walk, to walk that path of humility. Let's close in prayer. Father, we come before you, I pray with humbled hearts, Lord, open to you and your word. Father, as we see today, you desire the heart of humility. You resist the proud, but you give grace to the humble. And so, Lord, humble us today, because life is difficult. Life is full of people who are proud, who are angry, who are arrogant, Lord, give us the heart of Jesus, the humility, the mindset of Jesus to follow his example, to walk in his footsteps down the path of humility. Lord, that we might gain that reward, that we might please you. Lord, that we might reflect you in this world that is lost and dying and is in great need of you. Lord, we come before you, and as we begin to transition to this communion service, Lord, we just ask that you help us to remember that you are the reason that we can be here today. You are the reason we are here to worship you this morning. And so, God, we thank you again and again. May the story never get old that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for your sins, for our sins. We pray all this in your name. Amen. At this moment, and there's no greater sermon of, than a sermon about humility to transition into our communion service. And so if you have your communion cup there, um, 
You can go ahead and take that out. <clears throat> because it is to help us remember that sacrifice, that great humility that Jesus showed when he died on the cross for our sins. Not to mention the, the night of the Last Supper, he humbled himself still yet to wash the disciples' feet, but ultimately then to go and die on the cross for our sins. And so that's what this cracker, that doesn't taste very good, <laughs> reminds us of. All right, it's not, we're not taking this for the taste. All right, the cracker is here to remind us of Jesus' body, which was broken on the cross for us. And Jesus at the Last Supper said, do this in remembrance of me. And then in the same way, Jesus' blood was shed for our sins. And so Jesus took the cup after supper and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now let's go to the Lord in prayer one more time. Heavenly Father, this communion service <coughs> is to remember you. It's to remember, God, what you did for us. So, so many times we can, we can read this story, hear this story, and we can almost come, become numb to it. Lord, we pray that that is not the, the effect today, but that today the effect is that you did die on the cross for our sins that we might be forgiven. Us, rebels, us who have um, committed treason against you by going the way of pride and going the way of self and sinning against you. So God, we come before you today humbled that you are a God that created a way that we could come back to you, and we thank you for that. Lord, we thank you again and again for your word that we might know who you are that we might know what you've done for us and what you require of us. Lord, we just pray that today that your word can sink into our hearts, that we might live and walk the path of humility. We pray all this in your son's name. Amen. Let's stand together as we uh, close this morning with since Jesus came into my heart. <clears throat> Oh.
glory to the only wise God through Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Have a great day in the Lord. Stick around for Sunday school. And don't forget to meet Zach and Kate at their table in the back. All right. Have a good one.